Welcome to Tabletop Tommies. I'm Johnny. And I'm Phil. And in today's episode, we're joined by Grant from the D-Day Replay team to talk about an upcoming Bolt Action event in honour of the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Hi guys, thanks for having me on the pod. Uh, thank you for joining, Grant. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, good to be here. I am a frequent listener whilst I'm painting and building things in the garage. Good stuff. Fantastic. So D-Day Replayed, um, a few of our listeners may well be aware of it. It's, it's been on Facebook for the last few months and sort of slowly building a building. But you're here tonight to talk about the event and we'll throw it straight over to you. What is D-Day Replayed? Uh, well, primarily we're a charity event um, commemorating the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, we are two events running over three days. Um, so we have a Friday night event, which is like an airborne drop event. And then we've got a two day overlord event. Um, and we're fairly confident that we're we're putting on something that's quite unique to the the event, the bolt action event calendar. Certainly in Scotland, hopefully wider. Um, you know, playing bolt action version two, like like you're not familiar with it on the tournament scene. It's, that's very cool that you're doing the air landing before. So it, will there be sort of different platoons? So you'll you'll drop your paratroopers on day one, and then the outcome of those battles will affect day two, day three. Yeah, that's the idea. It's a kind of a dynamic campaign. Um, so victory will be determined by the overall campaign points that each team have generated. Mm -hmm. But you'll have consequences from one day to the next and battle to the next. Yeah, basically kind of making it interactive in that sense. Fantastic. So, and what? Well, how many people are we talking about here? So you've got the, the Friday night and then you've got the full day of gaming on the Saturday and the Sunday as well? Yeah, so Friday night's a bit smaller um, just because of the nature of setting up and how many tables we'll have available. We've got space for 12 players. We've got eight at the moment. Um, and over the weekend, we've got space for a full 40. I think we can do two teams of 20. Um, and at the moment, we've got two teams of 12. So there's still tickets available. There's for still tickets listening. available. Thank you for the plug. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, yes. This goes out in a good amount of time. And mm -hmm. you fancy a trip to Sterling to play, or replay rather, the greatest amphibious invasion ever. Um, yeah, tickets are available for both allies and Axis. So we're no no blue on blue in our campaign weekend. So you mentioned teams there, Grant, and I'm automatically thinking about if you've got like overall commanders for the Axis side and the ally side, as well as having individual people in charge of their particular you know, army or, or company or regiment or what have you. Uh, we we debated this, and ultimately I think we landed on something that was like that was was going to come into effect on day two, on the final day, when there might be a kind of a a crossroads in terms of decisions to be made um, but up to that point we kind of want we're kind of focusing on really the small stories um of of d-day you know that your individual junior platoon leader mm -hmm. um i should mention as well d-day replayed as kind of a sister event to a much earlier war games event which was waterloo replayed um which ra ran in 2019 um in Glasgow University, the Great Hall of Gla Glasgow University had about 120 players, had about 22,000 miniatures, was about 120 wow. feet long. Mm -hmm. um, we're not anywhere near as big as that, but we kind <laughs> of share, uh, you know, a lot of what is in common with that event, which is, you know, we're looking to generate either a historical or a historical outcome um, from the campaign. I guess on the friday night you got six tables that are sort of normandy themed and then on the saturday we're storming the beaches and so you're going to have up to sort of 10 tables on the seafront yeah first thing on saturday morning we'll be storming the beaches um uh they'll all be kind of beachfront we would have loved to have modeled certain areas but ultimately we couldn't be that granular in what we were trying to produce trying mm. to produce a huge amount of beach terrain um in a in a quite blue Blue Peter sort of fashion, <laughs> but yeah, the, that's that's basically everybody's first game on the Saturday morning. I mean, you were saying it's not going to be as big as the Waterloo, but if you've got twenty tables at six foot each, that's a hundred and twenty foot of table there. <laughs> so that is quite a lot of table that you you're creating terrain for, and yeah. so like that that's not a small task, I would say. It's not a small ta task. I, this might be a bold claim, but we we'd like to think that we're maybe the largest amphibious assault in 28 millimeter this year <laughs> um and you know should we should we pack the place out that'd be thirty two thousand points worth of bolt action forces in play um and about 96 feet of beaches i think i think stuart has currently produced yeah huge amount of dragon's teeth and uh check hedgehogs for the, for the beaches mm -hmm. which he's probably sick of the sight of by now actually <laughs> and that's probably a record in itself to be fair 
The most yeah, tech hedgehogs we'll, in one room. <laughs> we'll, I'm, we'll be giving a lot away at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so worth coming, I guess, even if you don't know what, why else to go. Just go for some free terrain. Yeah, if you'd like to play, yeah, if you want to take some of that away or if you want to replay D-Day or indeed any other amphibious landing, um, we've got you covered. Uh, we can definitely lend you some stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I've been following along on Facebook and I've seen um, the post a few weeks ago about the Czech hedgehogs. Um, I believe Stuart was making them out of pink foam initially and then the, the call went out to to get the 3D printers going. Yeah, so one of our sponsors is um, Alba Studio, which is a 3D mm -hmm. printing business based in Aberdeen. They have very generously given us a lot of really beautiful Normandy 3D printed buildings. Mm -hmm. um, which you'll see on the tabletops, uh, which we spent a lot of time painting as well. But they were able to step in and just kind of mass produce lots of um, dragon's teeth just to kind of take the pain away. And Sarissa have been really generous, haven't they, with their landing craft? I saw that today. Yeah, Sarissa, as uh, Rich at Sarissa and indeed uh, Dave and Ellie have been really, really helpful. Fantastic sponsor as well. Um, I've given us, I think, 32 landing craft and something like 16 or 18 bunkers. Which is gonna when when it all comes together, I think it is gonna it is gonna look spectacular, and uh, we do hope the players feel like they've gone to something that's that's quite special. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds it. What are you using for the the mats? Have you actually got a load of the beach mats in neoprene, or have you been making tables for it? We've we've been making them. Um, to source something like that would have been very expensive. Um, and we didn't have we didn't have a sponsor kind of lined up that was maybe going to step in and help us with that. And also, it's quite a big ask. Um, but luckily, my lovely partner Amy um, wor <laughs> uh, works in kind of costume um, and design and stuff like that in theatre and in, at university. So we basically made them from scratch. Yeah, we we did. She did lots of cutting and sewing for us, and then dip dyeing and dip dyeing again, um, and basically produced lots of beach mats that fitted our scenario and it was it was just perfect yeah well, are the beach mats in six by four or have you done it so that you have the table sort of running along through each other if you know what i mean so the, the edge of the table isn't obvious if you're looking at it i don't think it will be obvious no but mm -hmm. it's not been in six by four what we've done is basically the strip of the beach so it is dyed up to a certain uh, depth. So I believe it is 12 inches of water followed by 18 inches of sand laid across any other normal table gives you your your beach terrain uh, without having to produce a six by four mat. Mm -hmm. The reason I was asking is one of the things that I was going to ask you about is are these players playing one on one? Or will some of the weekend be sort of combined arms where you've got multiple platoons facing multiple platoons at the same time? Yes, yeah, Sunday is in fact doubles day. Um, so okay. the three games on Saturday will be all play as individuals, and then on a slightly lower points value, I think it's six fifty points. There'll be doubles games, two doubles games on Sunday, which should be a lot of fun. I played doubles a couple of times recently, and yeah, a lot of fun to be had in doubles. And in terms of the the platoons that people are bringing, obviously they're going to be themed for the day. Um, are we seeing a, a variety of, of different um, units being represented and um, different you know, units from the German defenders being represented so far? Yep. Yeah, so we were quite prescriptive in that we wanted to lean into the history where we could. Mm -hmm. um, so the lists are quite limited in terms of what you can pick from. They're good lists, though. You can get a lot, uh, a lot of tasty gear in them. Um, so we've definitely got some British commando players. We've got mm -hmm. some British infantry players. We've got american the american army we've got royal marine commando lists the german side for the first day for at least the, the beach landing you've got kind of ost troop lists. i think it's like static be beach defense sure. um, yeah. so that would be 7 16th and 352nd infantry divisions if you're a mm -hmm. history buff like i am <laughs> so yeah panzer division panzer grenadier reinforced platoon Mm -hmm. or uh, the Der Windhund Grenadier Company are the lists available for the, the moving in land battles. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's where you're going to start to see some some big armor pieces mm -hmm. coming into play. And as well as that, we we have a row of special specials tables, is what we've been calling them. So whilst people bring their own army and they'll play their own army for four games, we've cherry-picked some of the scenarios from the D-Day Overlord Warlord book to play so they'll leave their own army behind and they'll go and play a kind of hollywood style special mission oh, so okay. we've 
So we're doing Pegasus Bridge, mm -hmm. um, an another very generous um, bit of kit uh, from Warlord Games, uh, another great sponsor and partner. Uh, and it's a huge undertaking to build an MDF. <laughs> um, so we're playing Pegasus Bridge, uh, Merville Battery. The third one is Villa Bocage, so the mm -hmm. kind of tank, uh, Michael Whitman tank ambush yeah. at Villa Bocage. And the fourth one is Carantan, uh, so American Airborne Band of Brothers kind of Hollywood moment there. Nice. Um, so yeah, I, people won't be won't be playing with their own army, but we'll have lots of aids and umpires and things to kind of assist people with some of the special rules or some of the scenario that's getting played. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of get a, a flavor of, uh, yeah, a, a bigger flavor of what the Normandy picture looks like. On the note of the people who are helping out to sort of make the day run smoothly, who is in the team behind D-Day Replayed? So D-Day Replayed, the D-Day Replayed team is myself, Stuart Ainsley, and Alistair Unicum. Um, so I primarily am looking after the kind of the event management and logistics for the weekend. Um, Stuart's doing uh, all the marketing and promotion stuff that you'll be seeing online and in on Facebook and Instagram and things. And Alistair came on board to be our tournament organizer. And he's done lots of work in uh, writing scenarios and tweaking lists and kind of and it, it, kind of personalizing it and coming up with brand new scenarios. Two scenarios which are, are available on our website as a kind of sneak preview, which is hitting the beaches and, and moving inland. Um, we're also getting a lot of help from games clubs local to us. So, mm -hmm. Steve at Common Ground Games, he's uh, building a lot of terrain for us um, and, yep, giving a, a lot of his time. Brian at Dwarf, which is the Dunfermline Games Club, is also a sponsor. He's he's doing a row of scenery as, as well as Steve. On top of that, we've got, have you ever heard of SPIT, which is stands for mm. Stupid stupid Projects in 28mm? In 28mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're getting a lot of help from them. That's uh, Chris and Pat and mm. Gordon and Jacqueline. Um, who are also uh, providing terrain for a row. Yeah. Um, so three three great partner organizations that are are helping us um, put on the event, giving up their time, making things, bringing bringing terrain, bringing their expertise. And obviously, this is in in honor of the 80th anniversary of D Day, but it's also linked to the charity Waterloo Uncovered. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we approached Professor Tony Pollard. He's the head of Battlefield Archaeology at Glasgow University. Um, you might know him from National Geographic's Nazi megastructures. Um, he was behind Waterloo Replayed, which was the big game in 2019. So we went to him for his his blessing, basically, and he he said, you know, you really should make it a charity event. Um, and we thought, why not support Waterloo Uncovered again? Uh, it's a great cha charity. It's quite a unique charity, and it helps um, veterans and military families through archaeology and kind of... Mm -hmm kind of finding peace through that mm -hmm. um both from their kind of physical and their their mental injuries and they go off to do archaeological dig digs they've done waterloo a number of times i know they've gone to belgium um i think also it was 2022 tony took a group of falklands war veterans back to their own battlefields mm -hmm. um to do archaeology there mm -hmm. um and yeah it's quite a unique charity i think and we're we're mm -hmm. really happy to be supporting them again yeah, it seems like a sort of the perfect charity to partner the event with to to do something so sort of pertinent. I imagine, especially the bolt action community, will be very supportive mm. of that charity. And so, a huge shout out to them because that's brilliant. Yeah, do check out their website. Do check out they put out lots of really interesting um, content on their YouTube. So yeah, check out Waterloo Uncovered um, charity. I think it's brilliant. And the event's been held at uh, Common Ground Games in Stirling, which will be anyone who's following sort of the Scottish scene of bolt action will be familiar with. Yes, Common Ground's certainly building a, a name as a, you know, a, a home of bolt action in central Scotland. Um, it gets, it's getting a lot of play in the last couple of years. Um, Me, uh, Alistair hosts Megatron there, um, yeah. has done for the past two years. So that's, that's kind of at the back of us in August. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you've got the Scottish Nationals across a weekend in September. I think it's the 21st, 22nd. But yeah, certainly is is proving itself a hub of of bolt action. And any other mentions for any any other partners or sponsors we haven't already said yet, Grant? You want to give a shout out to? Absolutely. Um, big shout out to Marcus at Warlord, um, who kind of 
listened to our kind of pitch from the from the off and was immediately on board with it. He's been really great, really supportive. Um, we've had a lot of support from Marcus. Um, Osprey Games, I'd like to shout out to as well. They're providing some really interesting books as well as some bolt action campaign books for our charity raffle. Uh, really grateful for that. Also, Tim Cathral, uh, who I don't know if you've seen any of our website content or our player packs, but he uh, draws these amazing sketches. Um, mm -hmm. And you'll see them. He's got his own Instagram presence. And I think it was just through Stuart kind of sparking up a conversation with him through Instagram. Um, and he was very happy for us to use some of his illustrations. And I'm so glad that he did, because I actually feel like they really elevate a lot of our marketing material. I think they're really eye catching because of Tim's um, sketches. Um, and I've not seen them. I've not seen anybody else do anything like that. So I'm quite chuffed with that. It does sound like a brilliant event, especially sort of the storm on the beaches, I think is what appeals to me, <laughs> like reenacting all the films that were sort of, I grew up with essentially, um, which we don't often do in bolt action because when you play, I play a lot of competitive bolt action and because it's such an asymmetrical situation, mm -hmm. it's not a common situation you play at events. Mm -hmm. And so having the opportunity to do it does sound brilliant. Um, if I did want to know which armies I could bring, though, hmm. where would I find all that information and all the other stuff about the weekend? Primarily, I would send you in the direction of our, our website. Our mm -hmm. website is ddreplay.uk. Um, through that, you can download all the PDFs, which are the the player packs for the Axis and the Allies. That will have all the army lists in there. There's also a couple of scenarios. In fact, the first two scenarios are there in PDF form, which is hitting the beaches and moving up to the second line. So if you want to have a bit of an idea of the scenarios and the way that the the points are scored, yeah, seek those out on the website. But we're also very active on on Facebook and we also put a reasonable amount of kind of model content on Instagram. And by models, I mean small models, not <laughs> not the usual Instagram models. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't think I don't think we'd get very much um we wouldn't sell very many tickets if we did that, I don't think. Well, that does sound like an awesome event, um, especially as it's on the anniversary of D-Day itself. I think that makes it something quite special that you're not going to get the opportunity to play in again. So thank you for coming on and telling us all about it. Thanks very much for having me on, guys. It's been great. And so if you are interested, check out the website, which is ddayreplayed.uk. It is Friday the 7th of June all the way through to the 9th of June um up in sterling um we'll definitely be following along on facebook um it's been really interesting watching the progress so far in, in terms of the overcoming those obstacles uh like the czech hedgehogs and um i saw this morning the um landing craft being built and ali's been busy painting shermans as well recently so yeah it's absolutely fantastic event um good luck with everything and yeah we'll be looking looking along over the weekend to see how you guys get on Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. And also, I've just remembered, keep an eye out. I think we've got a little feature in War Games Illustrated, the next um, issue of that as well, for more uh, terrain building goodness. Fantastic. Well, ta-ta for now. Ta-ta for now. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.